Right, uh, today we're going to be talking about um, classes and self within them and the underscore underscore, sorry, the underscore in it, underscore underscore. So the purpose of this uh, video today is to go through seven underscore in it, underscore, underscore, and explain exactly what they are and what they do. I've been seeing a number of uh, posts online and some groups have been and people are asking about it, so I thought I'd do a video. So here on the screen that we're recording, um, start off, we have four different objects, right? So I want to kind of work backwards a little bit um, up the screen, um, but I want to explain these first, and then this will explain what self and underscore in it, underscore in it does. Underscore, underscore in it, underscore, underscore, sorry. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister. So essentially we have four objects. We have a count number, um, we have test one, two, and three. I want to explain the difference between the two. It is important, but it will explain when we go further back up, underscore, underscore, in it, underscore, and self. So essentially this object here, let's look at the first scenario. We have a count number, and what it's doing, it is calling class bank details, okay? So here's the class bank details. And what it's basically doing is it's passing four parameters this count number, name, date of birth, and this is both Myers, both the record of the country. So up here, essentially we have account number, name, date of birth, and country as the primary thing passed in, all right? Now, because it's an object, this object wants to use um, the class bank details, and it wants to use some of the methods and the functionality within that. But in order to do that, um, you basically need to initiate when you pass the parameters in, you need to initiate the, the parameters and tell it to actually allow account number to basically use the class by details and all this functionality. So the whole idea behind underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore here is it basically initiates this class and it basically says it allows anything that's passed in from an object, in this scenario, account number, with four parameters, it's a base, it allows it to go off and process those uh, process those details. All right. So in basic in programming in Python system, you want to basically look for the scenario where you either want to directly access the class and tell it to process the parameters that it's expecting in, in this scenario here. Okay. Or you can do it in this scenario down here. And actually what a fact it's doing is it's still creating three different objects, but in actual fact, it is accessing the methods with that class up here. So we have one, two, three, three methods, okay? And in them, we've got obviously got the method names, check account number, length, check name, and check date of birth. So in this scenario, we're basically passing in these details, and we're telling them passing test A, test B, and, um, and test date of birth. Okay, um, so okay, give me a second. I'll just expand this. Apologies. So, just to re recap, um, you have two scenarios where you can pass in all the parameters that the actual class is looking for, or you can pass in a particular parameter that is being passed to a method that's within the class. Okay, so what the init bit does here, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, init, is it says initiate this class and allow what's passed in from an object, depending on whether it has all the details, in this scenario, this line here, or you want to pass in from an object an individual value that's been passed to a method. So if you didn't have underscore, underscore, init, underscore, it wouldn't allow the class, it wouldn't allow these objects, the, the data that's passed from these objects, the count number, test one, two, or three, come into the gash of class of the process. So that's the first thing. So in order to initiate the class and allow an object to basically process parameters pass into it, you need to put in this on the very first line, this underscore init underscore underscore. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the question is people are asking what does actually self mean? All self is doing is when you initiate the class, it's basically telling saying take the parameter or parameters that are passed in from the object and process them. That's all it's doing. 
So self in another way basically means it is the parameters that are passed in the object and they are the parameters that will be processed within the class. So if we go down here, okay, so I, I'm going to expand these three here. Right, so let's take a scenario here. Let's work away with the overall, we're calling the, we're calling the, uh, we're passing the act parameters from the account number into the object and we're going to process. Okay, so in this scenario, we create an account number and we set it, set it, open up the class bank details and process these one, two, three, three, four details. So once you run this piece of code, we'll do that in a second. What it will do is it will pass the account detail, these bank, these details in, into bank details, and it will basically pass it into the very first line. Now the very first line is recognizing that the fact it's looking for four parameters. So if I if I have three parameters here, and we can test this in a while, it will throw an error because it's looking for four parameters. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that when it passes them in it will just process them straight. So these are basically going to be passed in and we're going to see them in a second, what the output of all of them are, okay? So that's the first thing. In the second scenario, again, in these scenarios, we are actually passing in bank details, but we're passing test A, which is a variable up here we've created to take, the in, take some input. We're passing into this method, um, I think it's check number length, is it? Yes. The test A is going to be the, the method, it's going to be passed into this method called cells. So, again, the difference between this method here and this first line here is an actual fact, let me just write that, in an actual fact that the method uh, test A is only passing in one value, but in in that method, it's only expecting one value. Whereas in the initial first line up here, it's expecting four values. So when you use self, self can either take in, if it's been passed directly to the class name, in this scenario, bank details, all the details and pass them here. Or self can also be used that it recognizes that it's been passed to a method and the method is only expecting one value in. So if you had, a so b so c so d here it would then be expecting for so that particular method check account of a length for a particular value but we're not doing that now and all it's doing here and the rest of this then is taking the self value that's passed in checking it and then basing this if statement uh printing out a value okay save the check name we're basically checking is cells equal to joe uh, if it is, if the account name is correct, else the account name is incorrect. And on the third uh, check data part, um, and this is down here, this variable here, we're basically going to enter a data part. And again, it's going to check, does it equal the value? And if it says yes, if the data part is correct, no, or else no, it's going to say data part incorrect. So just to recap before we pro process these and just show you the scenario, uh, init is used to initiate the class and allow the objects to basically use the values that they've been assigned to be brought into the class and processed. Self then basically defines the object values that are brought either in, in if it's they're passed to the actual class, if they're passed directly to the class name, you can be brought in, but you need to make sure that all the requisite amounts of parameters are passed and they'll be processed or self can also be used passing a single variable, but it would have to be passed to the method. And assuming the method has no, it's not expecting other parameters, it will actually process the data. So let's let's run let's so let's run this code. Um, so what we're expecting, we have a number of different lines going to come in here. Uh, we've got three methods, and then we've got this force initiate initiation uh, method as well. And all that will do is take in four parameters, it will process them, process them, and it will have a little bit of logic here to show how it works, and then it will also show you the four print statements to show you what we've passed from here. Okay, so I'm gonna process this now. Okay, so 
first thing it's going to do is up here it's going to look for an account number right so in this scenario it's going to say password account number so we're going to say let's just say one two three okay then it's going to say what's my name Joe. all right and then we're going to say the date of birth so i'm going to say the 54th of the 89th of 2598 okay so before we do anything further we have three parameters that it's passing in and it's basically going to pass these values because it, it's we're looking at these values here it's going to test for all these values but just to remember separate from that we've also passed this object up here but it will actually process these one two three four as well because remember it's passing it to the class name whereas these are being passed to with to the class with the class methods so let's just hit return okay and uh, let's just take you through the output of all this so first line is account number correct length right so what's happening here so in here we've asked uh, uh, an object to take to pass the value of whatever we put input and pass it pass the object to test a test a was passed down here into this value and then it was passed to test one and basically we're saying the test one equals bank details dot check account number length test a so essentially what's happening here is one two three is being passed to here but as i said it's using a method of this class so this is still initiated but what happens is it goes down to the method and it basically checks the value okay um, so that's the first one then then the next one was we're checking the name okay so we're basically saying is it joe um and basically is it joe yeah so this one so i just apologize these last three lines here are the the test of all these this line here is the test of this okay so let's go up and let's go up and check all this so test two we'll just go back into this in a second but test two is checking the name so i put in joe okay so first one first one is wrong count number length because it's less than six okay second one is checking the name is it equal to joe joe's got a capital j I put it with a small j, so I said the count name is incorrect. And then the third one is just checking your date of birth. 54 of the 89 2598. It's expecting 2105 So it's going to basically say the date of birth is incorrect. So in this scenario, the class is initiated. The basically the values, the parameters were passed to self. Self recognized that it goes has to actually go to the method, uh, each particular method processes and print out the values. So there's an example of a self on its own. It's not expecting more than one parameter, but you're still able to use it and it's basically referencing that value. Okay. The other thing is to look out for is when we ran this script, we also had a class here called account number. Uh, or sorry, a, an object called account number, and uh, it's passing into the class name, the bank details, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, John, the date of birth, and marks. So in that scenario, it's basically, the initiation works as well, and it's basically saying self, so what's the, the self values? The self in this scenario, the account number, name, date of birth, and country, are being assigned to these values here. Then we're basically saying within the actual class, we're basically saying the self account number, self account name, date of birth, country, etc., etc., is all taking the values that are assigned into these one, two, three, four parameters passed from below. And what it's doing there is, is then just basically going to run the actual values in, check it, and then print out the statement. The final thing I did here in this logic as well is to basically i can reference self as that will come from these values so it's basically the values here are just printed from down here so to recap 
underscore underscore in it underscore and self can be used to basically receive values from an object. The object can pass multiple values in to the class name or it can pass individual values into the class but access the methods of that class. So this is the method of that class, this is the method of that class, and this is the method of that class. The benefits of this really are that you only really have to define the, what happens to those objects um, once here in the class. And I could go in multiple places, create objects of that class and anywhere in the program, pass these details in, and it will use those details within the class and using self to basically process those details and give me the output. It's very handy because then you don't have to go back and basically, in each scenario where you create this object, have all these parameters and have all this logic written. You just have to create the object, put it equal to the class name. The class will recognize that it's the object is trying to access the parameters and the methods of itself. And by using self, then basically self allows the information you pass in to be passed around within the class. And the same applies with the, that's the objects there, that's the, sorry, that's the object here and the methods. The same applies when you actually send in just the parameters that the actual class is expecting when you initiate the class, okay? So there is a very, very um, thorough, I hope, uh, example of a class how to initiate a class, what actually underscore underscore in it is doing and self for doing. I hope you've enjoyed today. If you got benefit out of this, can you actually um, hit the subscribe button? Really appreciate that. Uh, looking to build up the numbers on the channel. I'm looking to keep these um, tutorials as realistic um, as possible so people can understand actually how to use the, the logic within the programs. Give us a big thumbs up on social media and we shall catch you soon. So thanks for coming today and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.